Here we are at the third Sunday of Advent, and as you can see by the candles on your wreath, something is different. We have a pink candle to light, and most priests would tell you that we don't have pink candles in our liturgical year. We, it's, it's rose, which, as my mother always reminds me, is French for pink. So this third Sunday is special. It is known as Gadate Sunday, and Gadate is Latin for rejoice. And the church gives us this break in the traditional penitential season of Advent to stop and think about what is about to happen. We are about to receive our Savior. And this is cause for great rejoicing. As you read in the second reading of this Sunday Mass, it says, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice, for the Lord is near at hand. The cause for this rejoicing is our anticipation of what is about to happen. The world is about to receive its Savior. As we read in the Gospel from Luke, the people were all filled with expectation and they were asking in their hearts whether John might be the Christ. We know what it's like to anticipate. This whole season is filled with anticipation for Christmas. We put up the tree, we decorate, we buy gifts, we do all these preparations. We build up all of this excitement within us in anticipation for this day. Now, this is a beautiful part of our culture, but unfortunately we can get caught up in the Christmas music, the hot chocolate and the, the fun of the season. And we all too easily lose sight of what this season is meant to be. We are invited this week in Advent to stop and ponder what was it like for those people, God's chosen people, to wait in anticipation for their Savior. How long had the people of Israel longed for the Messiah? Their their hope in a savior had to be sustained through century upon century as they held on to the promise of God that one day he would deliver his people. Of course, they were looking to be delivered from the hardships of the world, from oppression and slavery and their living circumstances. What they did not fully appreciate is that God was going to do something greater than that. He was sending a savior to deliver them and the whole of creation from the oppression and slavery of sin that had separated all of humanity from the intimate relationship that we were created to enjoy with God as Adam and Eve once did in, in the Garden of Eden. But with the incarnation of Jesus Christ, something absolutely amazing had happened. The entire order of creation had been set back toward the reconciliation of man to God through the new Adam and the new Eve. This is the kind of amazing that should blow our minds away, that God himself, the second person of the Blessed Trinity, lowered himself so that we could be united with God for all eternity. God did not just send a savior. He became our savior. Have we become dull to this uh, amazing gift? Because we're just so used to knowing that Jesus came to save us. What if Jesus had not bec become man? What if we had been left in sin and error pining? What if we had been left in darkness? Thank God we don't have to know what the world would be like without Jesus because Jesus did come to us over 2,000 years ago and his light has forever overcome the darkness. This third week of Advent, as you light that rose candle on your wreath, maybe pause and offer up a prayer of praise and thanksgiving for the gift of our salvation, which God gave to us that first Christmas. And then rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say 
rejoice. God bless.